Capital T Films. You gotta love this shit. All right. Today we're gonna welcome back Timothy Spokes. Um, he was one of the artists who I interviewed a couple months back, and you know, we're gonna wrap it up again and just see, chop it up again and just see like uh, what's been going on with him. It's been a while. I've been seeing him on Instagram. He's been performing and putting out new music, and it's, it's, we got a lot to talk about. So thank you, thank you for coming through. How you feeling right now? I feel pretty good still. I feel pretty blessed. You know, it's like a lot of blessings pouring in recently. It's just, it's just nice. It's a nice feeling. So, yeah. Okay, cool. First thing I want to talk about is the mixtape, 99. Just tell me how you, how you came up with that name and the process of everything. Honestly, so 19, or oh, just 99, so I was born in 1999, right? And I feel like 99 because it sort of like represents from like when I started music to when I started changing music, you know what I mean? So like I represented as 99, so it's just like it's a representative of me, kind of, right? And um, all the songs in there represent just like growth in general, like it shows like how you can have different types of music, different types of sounds, and different types of beats, and talk about different things that actually motivate people on it, right? So like you start, you go to songs like Mission or like Counting, right? It's like it shows that you can still have positive messages, or like it still be hard without the negativity in there. You feel me? So I can. Uh, and what was the sort of process when you do when you're thinking when you're putting putting these tracks together like because i know you always said like um you want to be a role model and your songs are a bit different with no swearing and stuff is there anything sort of different that you said okay maybe i want this to reflect this or i want this song to be this type of people or what, what, what was the sort of uh planning behind that so the planning behind it was just like more so i had them in the vault already right and i knew that i wrote them in a time where i was like trying to f figure out my sound and figure out myself Right, and uh, most of the songs there, like, it's just like it takes from all the popular songs that are out there right now, and literally just takes them down to a level where it's more positive, more like reaching out to the youth or whatever, mm -hmm. right? So, like, songs like Funds, for example, like, you listen to the chorus, like, say what you want, and stuff with the dawn, and let my diamonds do the talking, right? But I don't need grails all in my mouth just to show that I'm flossing, right? So, it's, it shows the both contrast of like, you can talk about those same things, but at the same time, understand the bottom picture or like the hidden picture underneath it right so that's the main thing yeah. now when you have lines like that it just shows like you're you're different in, in how you think because you're in like a game a genre, a genre of music that really like values you know the physical like the chains cars whatever stuff like that so do you feel like you're sort of at a disadvantage when you come like that or do you get really get people thinking and realize like wow this guy's on a different sort of level like how do people like react to that for, for me, like, in general, I think people really like the difference in it because a lot of people just like music because, like, they just bump it, right? It's a vibe mm -hmm. to them, right? So everything, for, for me, like, music's just a vibe, right? You can have different types of music. You can have a glow-fi and make you feel really chill and vibe out. Or you can have, like, some trap, hardcore trap make you want to go dig, do these types of things on the streets, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, I feel like, for me, my music will make you f go into that, that, that same type of vibe but make you think about things, like how J. Cole does it sometimes, or Chance Rapper does it sometimes. When they drop certain songs, they'd be like, yo, this is actually sick. Right, but at the same time, you're speaking facts. Like you know, that's, that's the whole goal, the whole purpose behind it, right? Because like making pop music with a good message, mm -hmm. right? And that's that's not really a thing nowadays. People don't really make pop music with positive messages anymore, right? So I was like, it's it's a it's a spinoff from whatever you, like the the rap game that I'm kind of in. So that's the vibe, but you put then the wisdom is still in there. Right? <laughs> don't the wisdom yeah. in there, bro. <laughs> the wisdom in there. Okay. What would you say your favorite track is after that? Honestly, funds. Honestly, <laughs> like funds is just like cause I, I've been performing it recently, and I'm just like I realize how much I love the song at this point. Like when I wrote it, I, I made the song, and I was like, hey, you know, it's cool, right? And I posted, it's like, ah, it's dope, right? But then, now that I'm re going, I'm going back to my music. I'm like, yo, funds is actually a hard track, right? And like missions also there too. Missions up there too, and I'm like counting and never stayed. It's like it's like they're okay, but funds and mission holy, those two songs, those two songs really hit me deep. Like, the yeah, way. Okay, the platform Unspoken Talents is one of the things that um, I don't think you were doing before when we spoke. Now it's something I see a lot of artists are coming through. It's um, people are having fun. It's a safe space. It's space to go and just be around positive people. And it's like a really good thing now, especially because, you know, unfortunately a lot of kids are like, you know, dying to stupid acts of violence around mm -hmm. the city. So it's uh, uh, like a hub where people can go, vibe out to good music. It's always amazing to see something like that. So how did that come about, and like, why is that something you're doing? Honestly, for Unspoken Talents, man, it started off for me like doing a show for $400, bro. And like, it was like one of those ads you see on Instagram, like the showcase tour. Like, I'm not even bashing him or anything. It's just one of those where it's just like, 
I did it because I wanted to experience it, right? Yeah, I, I oh, thought I was good enough, you know. I thought I was good. I came second place, right, to my other, like, my boy, who's part, like, my boy now. I was yes. just Cappy and Fusa, those two guys. guys uh, Fusa's actually from Buffalo, and Cappy's from Ottawa. Like, I made a song with Cappy, sick, right? And, like, in general, so, like, we, we still performed, and um, it was nice. I made a lot of connections, but I realized after performing, I spent $400 on this performance. And I was like, I got to spend that $400 on making my own concert and have meet more people in my own community. So I was like, you know what? To my brother, I'm like, I'm a dude. We went in the, we're in the garage with one of my mother's coworkers in the garage, right? And I was telling them, like, yo, honestly, I want to start this whole concert called Spoken Talents. This is like December. This is almost, like almost a year from now. <laughs> Only a year ago. And I said, like, I want to do, like, start this whole thing. And like in January, he's like, yeah, you know what? I, I think you could do it. But like, start it later. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it January 4th. I'm going to get it done. So actually sat down, organized everything, got it planned out, and I did it. Like, I, I researched different places to do, like, concerts. It was cheap enough for me. I, like, fits my budget. So I was like, all right, cool, got it. Got some nice people out there. Got Jordan Rhymes to come out there. You know what I'm saying? And it was just nice. Like, a lot of people came out. There's a, there a lot of people that came out. It was a big, like, venue at Gore Meadows. And, like, a lot of people came out. And it was a nice feeling because, like, hosting your own concert and, like, you're the headliner type thing, it's just cool because you reach the people in your own community and you see the support of your own community come mm -hmm. out to your own concert. And ever since then, I just like got to get more different artists onto the show. And I got people like Big K out there, like all these different artists, like they never performed before. People like Orville, man, he never performed before. And like, it's crazy because like now he's like a sick performer dropping all these type of songs. And it's crazy because they, like, they always tell me like, hey man, thank you for even hosting on Spoken Talents because I never got an opportunity to actually perform. Right, and I do it for free for people to come out to perform. Like, yo, just come out to perform for free. And like, what, what it is, it's just like a foundation for you. When you get to the bigger stages, you're able to just kill it, right? So you can build those skills by just doing a little free show. It doesn't even matter if you're paid or not. It's, Cause it's not about the, the the money, bro. It's about you putting your craft. You generally love music. You generally love making what you do and doing what you do. Literally, you have to be able to say, okay, I'm humble myself and just do whatever I can to build myself. So when I get to those levels, where well, you can't be. I have no stage experience and performing to 10,000 people. It doesn't make sense. Because then people are like, this guy's awkward. But like, you know what I'm saying? You don't want those, those right, characters to come out. So, yeah. That's, that's, mm -hmm. that's what I made it for. So, it's a lovely thing that I'm doing in community. So, yeah. So, that's amazing. So, it's almost been a year. So, how much unspoken talents have you put on, put so, on so far? So, so, I've actually done eight so far. Eight? I'm actually born, uh, organizing the ninth one in December. And, um, yeah, like, it, honestly, it's been it's been nice. Like, doing eight of them, bro, I did, like, one at York. Like, it was sick. I did, like, all over. And it was nice because um, in the new year, I was planning on doing, like, a whole, like, university tour. So that's college tour. And go to different universities, different colleges, and get the artists that are in the university colleges, take a break from your schoolwork, and actually just come perform. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's literally what I'm doing. Like, I'm still in school doing health science. I'm doing a hard program, right? I'm trying to get to medical school. It's a difficult time for me, Definitely. right? But it's one of those, I know for me, I like resting myself by doing something I love to do, right? And a lot of people just don't know what their talents are. Like, I, I feel like a lot of people are like, in this generation, everybody's so focused on like, oh, that guy's doing this, I think I can do it too. And stuff like, what am I good at, right? Okay, what can I, what, what can people look up to me as? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what can I do with my community to be a, different, a better person? A lot of people don't know what that is. It's pretty sad nowadays too. Mm -hmm. So if I can really help like, organize a whole platform for them to come out and actually realize what their talents are, that's great for me. Exactly. That's amazing. It's, it's good that you brought up the fact that you know you're a student. You need like that break every now and then because I agree. Like schooling, of course, it's good, but too much of it, you know, you can get stressed, and that's even people some people commit suicide, and it's tough. I believe like definitely it's something you love, and it's just about balance and being able to say, you know what, let me take a break and just go relax because you know when you spend too much time really studying, 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 like it can really have an effect on you. So true, true. definitely. What would you say to people who? might be thinking the same thing, you know, they want to put on a show, but they're scared of this. That's something of um, putting their money in and then, you know, maybe not having a turnout. I mean, like, is that something that you thought about? Like, wow, what if nobody really comes? What if, you know what I'm saying? Like, do I, will I have that support? What would you say? Honestly, uh, for volume six, like, it was like, there was still a lot of people there, but it wasn't like a substantial amount of people. And at that moment, I realized, um, I was like, yo, honestly, I'm still going to do this. Like, you know what I mean? Even if it's like four people that are there just to be there, I'm still going to do it because at the end of it, I know what I'm doing for community. I know I'm doing something bigger for those people that are coming out to perform, right? right? It's one of those things. Obviously, like, your ego is going to hurt a little bit. Your pride is going to hurt a little bit. But you got to take that aside and be like, hey, listen, honestly, you understand why you're doing this. It's not so, oh, I'm getting people to get clout and God, this money. It's like, it doesn't matter, right? Mm -hmm. It's one of those I'm really just trying to get people to come out and understand you can have a platform where you can perform where people generally give you actual feedback 
on your music and give you, you can actually see how people react to your actual music. Because one thing to post online and people to share it, you don't know how they actually feel about your music, right? It's one thing like I, I think like um, there's different ways to like really internalize how people actually mess with your music because it's one of those where people can actually internalize it by saying, "Oh, this is my song." People downloaded it. And if somebody didn't download your song and they said they liked it. They don't really like your song. Bro. People download music, listen to music all the time. You can't tell me you don't like you like my song and not have it on your playlist. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's one way. And another way is to say if you're performing and people don't like vibe out with your song, your song's probably not that yeah. song. Like you know what I mean? And people will tell you like we gotta fix and people I've spoken times we have like a whole positive environment. So people will tell you like, bro, like you nice set, you killed it, you can work on this, 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 is this. Come back for volume seven, boom, sick, done it. And mm -hmm. come back ten times better. Right, so then you can always grow and progress. So that's why I like, but so that's why I'm never gonna stop doing it. Even if one person comes, this is your matter. I'm still gonna do it. So yeah, that's amazing. All right, all right. Um, who are some of the artists that you've had on? Can you shout out some people who, and especially ones that you've seen a lot of growth in since like, the beginning? Bro, I'm talking about like Orville Grant, Shea Faith, Kimor Sparks, um, Big K, holy Big K out here, Spitty, yo, Spitty, this guy, I saw this guy on Instagram, like, I had this guy from, like, two years ago, and I saw this guy on Instagram spitting, and I was like, this guy's pretty sick, I messaged him, I'm like, yo, you want to perform, I was like, that came out, now he's like my homie, right, when we, we actually just came out from Guelph, like, performing in Guelph, this is nice, right, like, sick, with that child noir, he, yo, shout out to that guy, that guy helped me out so much by doing, like, the DJs, like, he's producing DJs and stuff, and, like, it was just nice for him, too, he's nice with it, um, Marie came out, I was sick, um, yeah, there's like, honestly, in general, there's just a lot of artists that came out. I can't even like mention all of them. There's like Jay, to, Jay the Kid, there's like Zeiss, all these different people, the new people that came out. It's just, it was nice to see them come out and just do their thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because like at the end of it, you can just have all these different artists come out and you just don't even know, like, these guys are town, bro. Like, people like, like, Ghost, this guy came out of nowhere talking about, I never performed before. And I was like, yo, bro, come through, perform, bro. Man came out, perform. Now he's getting better at it. Cause like at first he's more like boxed in, but now he's just like you know he's vibing on the stage, you know, vibing on his own track. Mm -hmm. Especially like Big K, bro. Big K, I remember like he, he's still in high school, right? And like when he started out, man, it was one of those that was like, oh, like you know, like he didn't have energy or anything like that. But then after that, people used to hype him up. We used to we were hyping this guy because we wanted to get the energy out of him, right? Support. It, it support this guy, right? So we made a whole song called Dash, right? Because like the funny thing is I have my own like studio too in my room, mm -hmm. and I did all the songs for free. Right, I was like, yo, come through, perform, like, you, you record your track, or perform the track, can you do dash, I'm on the dash, da na 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 throwing the cat, and I was like, ooh, the track's so big, and every time he plays a song, I'm like, ooh, ooh, I'm just going hard with it. Why? Because we want to show him that we have support, actual support to it, and show that your song can actually do well if you perform it right, right, and yet you can actually get people to actually look up to you and be like, yo, honestly, this guy's actually a good artist, even if this, because, like, the thing is, like, you can perform the song so differently than how the song's actually mixed. And people be like, your song's a banger. Actually, it's not, it's not that good. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's okay. But the fact you still got the, the fan to still be there. You know what right. I'm saying? So it really depends on that. So there's a lot of good from all the artists. So shout out to all the on Talents. Whoever performed on Unspoken Talents, shout out to all you guys. Jordan Rhymes, all these guys, man. Because they all came out and did their thing, and they all killed it, bro. If I miss anybody, it doesn't even matter, because you know you what you did. You know I know you, bro. You know, I, you know this. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So yeah, that's nice, man. Uh, so, still listen is you know, the Unspoken Talents, you had the big stage. Like, what else has Timothy Spokes been up to that you can tell us about? What is performing or recording or what, what else do you do, do you do? Honestly, for me, like, I do a lot of spoken word, too. Like, um, mm -hmm. so recently this year, like, uh, I was really praying to God, asking God, like, yo, just, like, show me, like, I want to, like, see who you are and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, in general, man, I found God. Like, like I really found God. Like, obviously, I've been going to church my whole life, right? Mm -hmm. But I never, like, there's a point where you have to reach like, the threshold of, like, hey, is God real? Like, you know, is he real? Like, it's, it's a sad thing you have to ask sometimes, right? Because you never want to ask those questions because it's like, nah, it's been joined to your head. Like, oh, faith in uh, but God's always there, right? It's always been joined to your head. But when you find out for yourself, it's different. Life is completely different, right? Like, for me, um, yeah, in general, like, like, God literally brought some random guy from New York to me and said, yo, do you want to join a Bible study? And I was like, uh, I mean, I was okay. Because I've been praying, like, God, like, made me have a close connection with you, right? And that happened. I was like, all right, cool. So we literally sat down every week, like, every week, every Wednesday, sat down, went through the Bible, read different sides. And I started reading the Bible myself, reached out to, like, places like Transformation Church. Shout out to Michael Todd, by the way. I, I shared this thing, and he shared it back on his page. It's pretty cool. But anyways, that him. Like, I was just, like, watching all these different YouTube videos on different, like, the faith and everything. And for me, I'm Seventh-day Adventist, right? And, um... Like, obviously, there's a time you have to realize, like, why am I even going to church Saturday? Why am I even believing these, these different things? Or where did it come from? Like, you can't just believe something you don't understand or, or know about, right? So, for me, like, literally, that's all I did. I was like, hey, I'm going to go find God for this. And I really found God. Like, I really did. And I, I, I 
been different, man. Like it's been it's been great. It's actually been great because like you you see the negative things that happen in life and realize like honestly, everything happens for a reason. Like you know that statement, everything happens for a reason. You can literally think back to everything happens for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. You go through some negative stuff, whatever you're going through in life doesn't even matter. But at the end of the day, it's gonna work out for your your greater good, right? That's the, that's one thing you have to really understand. So for that, I've been doing that and like just going around just preaching to different people and like. Speaking facts to other people, right? And they lost spoken word. I went to like Hamilton, he spoke a word. I went to the Perth church, he spoke a word. Like, it's just nice, right? So, so yeah, it's pretty much the artist side of me. Okay, sick. And, you know, for those who didn't know, watch our last interview, we spoke about this a little bit, you know, the peace, love, and positivity, being some of the Adventists, you know, and just being sort of more on the positive side, you know, not only swearing and music and stuff like that. So people just see, like, the difference, you know, uh, you had and even you know you say you look at the people like J. Cole, Chance the Rapper, which really have like like you said, there's a vibe, but it's often like a deep underlying message that it's like in that if you still rock to in mind too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um the videography and the production. Can you talk a little bit about that. That's another one of the ways you could have been supporting artists with unspoken uh talent. Yeah, so like, so also, what I've also, I also been doing too, like, I made like Unspoken Times, but I also made a thing called BFG Visions, which is more so like music videos for people, like a cheap alternative music videos. Because, bro, I remember when I was trying to start out, I was saying, like, yo, uh, 600, yo, 700, 800, 1,000, 2,000. I'm like, yo, you guys are bugging. Like, I'm not dropping as much money just for dropping a music video that's probably not going to do numbers like that, right? So that's when I started. So all these things that I'm starting to do, it resonated from just me going through and experiencing it. Right, so BFG Visions, like, literally just started with my brother, and we just, like, bought the My brother bought the camera, and, like, what it was is just we started making music videos. I literally just started making music videos, and, like, I started out, because I was always good at videography as a kid, and I really got into it. So I was like, you know what, I can really do the same quality work for cheaper the price, but less than half the price, these people. So I started doing music videos for 50 bucks, right, I started doing it, and, like, really, they came out, and a lot of people came out and started supporting it, and we're like, BFG Visions, man, it's a bigger vision, like, and, best, and BFG Visions actually has for blessings from God, right? So it's one of those, like, someone asked me, how much music videos? 50 bucks, say, 50 bucks? That, dang, blessings from God, like, I got you, right? And I started upping my prices over the, over the time, so, like, $100, $200, because I realized, like, I don't I think I'm ever going to go past, like, like probably 500 bro. Because at that point, it's just like, you're pushing that threshold of like, hey, yo, you're dropping dollars. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? So like, it's one of those, it's just like, it's, it's another way I can get back to the community. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like just hosting, have my own studio, come for studio time. You know what I'm saying? And you go to BFG Visions, got a music video done, and perform. So they're all linked together. You can go get a song, get a music video for the song, and perform the song all under the same window, right? So it's mm -hmm. just a great experience. So like, BFG Visions is another thing you started out. So yeah. Okay. From the conversations we have and what you're saying, it sounds like you're doing a lot. You know, you're yeah. in talents, you know, you say Bible study, finding God, you know, you're still keeping your religion and music, BFG Visions, and school. <laughs> and school, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you realize this, but that's a lot. How do you manage, like, what's your time management like and, like, you know, just overall mental health and just still staying, because you're still putting out, you're still doing shows, you're still very active, so how, how do you manage that? Honestly, man, it's just having faith, bro. Yeah. Like, it's one of those, like, I'm still working on the time management skills for it because I know it's a lot of stuff I'm doing. Like, especially for, like, school. Like, I always get caught up in, like, doing the music stuff or whatever, and I always forget about, like, your school is always there. Like, I, I, it's, it's sad because I always forget about it, right? And I always think back, like, dang, I, I could start putting in the work more, right? And then when, as soon as I started putting more work in the school, like, I realized why I, I love what I'm, the program I'm in, right? So it's just, like, find that time management, man. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a it's actually a struggle. I'm not going to lie to you, it's a struggle. But like I really have to just keep pushing and just keep doing it, man. Because what I realize is like you have the same. Everybody has the same amount of time, bro. Everybody has the same amount of time, right? And it depends on how you use that time. But you can literally say, "Yo, I don't have time for that." But you you have time for it. You're just wasting your time on something else, right? right? The, 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 how you divide up your time is everything, bro. Literally, you can spend 45 minutes on your phone, and 45 minutes we could have been done by writing an essay in 45 minutes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like, it depends on how you use your time management. Sometimes you have to suck up certain things. Like, okay, I don't want to do this, but you have to do it. You just have to do it because if you don't get it done, then you're going to stress yourself out. And that's why you, that's a lot of people stress yourself out because they think like, oh, I don't have time to do anything. I'm, I'm not I'm stressing out. When you tell yourself you're stressing out, you're going to stress yourself out. Mm -hmm. If you tell yourself, no, I'm good, I'm calm, I'm cool, I'm going to get it done, it depends on how you speak to yourself. Because right? if you tell yourself, I'm stressed, man, school is stressing me out, blah, blah, blah. school is going to be stressing you out. Mm -hmm. right? Because it's a mental thing, man. Your brain is so powerful right? because the way you think of things, I don't know if it's different for everybody else, but the way you think, if you say something so much to yourself, you could end up believing it, right? And when you end up believing that, it comes down to just, yo, at the end of it, that's what you just, that's, that's your reality. If you believe, yo, I'm short, I'm short, I'm short, I'm short, I'm short, I'm short, you're gonna believe you're short when someone tells you you're short, 
right? If you believe like I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm confident, I'm confident, you're gonna believe that you're confident in yourself, right? So a lot of people just bring themselves down, it makes them a lot more depressed and more have more anxiety because you're putting that in your mind to have more anxiety. If you tell yourself, yo, I'm better than this, I'm, I'm good, I'm happy, you're gonna be good and happy, right? So it's one of those, like, people, it's, it's obviously not easy, but you gotta really program yourself to say, okay, yo, I'm good. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, yo, I'm beautiful, I'm happy, I'm gorgeous, I can do whatever I want, I'm good in this life right now, I'm good where I'm at right now, because God's got my back, right? That's where the faith comes down to her. Because a lot of people just say, oh man, like, I don't know, I'm stressing and blah, blah, blah. You're not really stressing, you're making yourself stress. You, everybody's the same amount of time in a day. You can't say you're working 24 hours. It's not going to work out. It, it doesn't make sense. You wake up in the morning, 7 o'clock, boom. What are you going to do from 7 to 12? What are you going to do? What do you do for that time? Obviously, okay, commuting, two-hour commuting. Cool. Now what? The rest, of, the rest of the day is yours, bro. You know what I'm saying? But by like 6 o'clock, man, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm done studying. Why? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know you still have stuff to do, so do it. Right? It's just, it's hard. To, I know it's hard to do. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But you got to tell yourself, I know it's hard right now, but I'm going to get it done. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, the glory is get better in the end compared to the process. Right? So that's the main thing. It's kind of like in the gym, you know, if you're doing a curl or whatever, when it starts to get, you hit whatever amount of reps, when it starts to get, now that's that challenge. You got to keep going, you know? You got to keep going. Okay. Well, the term rapper, I think, often is often used negatively in our media. Mm -hmm. Maybe... It has a lot to blame, you know, the violence with the guns or certain people who got arrested or whatever. But what do you think about that when, you know, does that ever affect you? Because as someone who says, you know, you sort of grew up in the church and is still heavily in the church, when you sort of tell people, like, rapper, is, there, is that seen as a negative thing? So, most of the time it is seen as a negative thing. So that's why I always say it comes up a musician, mm -hmm. right? Because, like, I can rap, sing, and, like, dance, whatever. Like, I, I love music as a whole, right? right? So, like, people's like, yo, you're a rapper. I'm like, nah, but I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because like I can build different vibes, different tempos, and I can I can switch up the flow on if I want to. So it's not like I was acting like I'm rapping, rapping like hardcore rap. I can do it if I want, yeah. but also most of the time I can like add melodies in there, like you know. So in general, people's like, "Yo, you're a top rapper." Like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> not, not definitely a musician. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I can play piano, I can do, I can do this, I can do play instruments, I can dance, I can sing. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like. I know there's a negative connotation attached to rapper. I know that. Like, it's really negative. Especially nowadays. Oh, rapper's been shot. Blah, blah, blah. Rapper's in this. Rapper's in this. Rapper's in this. Rapper's in this. Rapper's yeah. Right? And everybody, everybody bites down on the word rapper. Right? Because a lot of people get into this because they want to be rappers. Right? And I'm like, bro, if you're just a rapper, you're not going to make it that far, bro. Because even the big time people who are rappers, they don't call themselves rappers or musicians. But people like Tory Lanez, bro, he's not a rapper, he's a musician. He can do different type of melody, different type of flows, and still be considered a rapper, but he's definitely a musician. Drake, same thing, different type of flows. And it's like actual rappers who just only can rap. And then you wonder why they don't make it that far, because they can't make melodies, it's just rap. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's one of those you have a balance of everything. So, yeah, that's why. I don't know if negative connotation attached to it, but it's one of those you have to fight the negative connotation, but you can't really do it if the rappers are doing these negative things. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah that, that's a definitely a good take. Okay. Is there anything else uh, you want to let you talk about? You want to let us know what's going on with you? Honestly, other than that, man, not much, man. It's just one of those, just, just have faith, man, because you're going to make it through it. Like, no matter what you're going through, bro, just keep a positive mindset and just keep pushing, because I know it gets hard in life, man, but you have to understand that God's always with you, bro, like, no matter what, right? And, um, I know it's hard to believe it sometimes because you're going through the, the, the negative times of, of like your life mm -hmm. and you feel like God's just not there, God's not watching over you, but just know that he is, bro. Because think of it this way. If you think about like the story of Job, right, and like God had God had Job in his hand, bro. And the devil says like, oh, if you take your hand off of Job, he's going he's gonna to turn his back on you, bro. And the story of the devil can't touch you unless God allows the devil to touch you, bro. Literally, that's, the devil had to ask God for permission to touch Job, you feel me? So like, and Job went through some negative things. People would die, like the harvest died, all these different things, bro. Things you can't even imagine. Whole family died, lost everything, lost prop. Like he lost a lot, bro. And he still had trust in God. And what did I do? God bless him in the end, right? And it was some negative things. So it's one of those. Everybody's going through hard times, man. Everybody's going through hard times. No matter what, you're human. It's a part of the human cycle. Everybody said so we're not similar. We're all similar. Bro. We're all the same, bro. Everybody's gonna go through some negative. Everybody's going through some dark things right now. Everybody's going through some dark things right now. But at the end of it, you have to just understand, like, hey, yo, I'm going to keep pushing through. It's not going to kill me. I'm going to keep going hard. Because if you don't have that mindset, like, yo, I'm going to keep going hard, bro, you're going to end up drowning in your sorrow, and you're going to end up harming yourself. Because it's all a mindset, bro. It's all a mindset. Everything's in your mind. 
everything you're going through, all the pain, the heartache you're going through is all in your mind. It depends on how you view things. Your, it's your perception on things, yeah. right? Because if you, say, say for example, someone like God forbid, someone died in your family, right? And you're like, dang, oh man. Obviously, give you time to hurt. It's okay to not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. It is, right? But give yourself time to hurt, but at the same time, let that build you up to say, okay, you know what? You know what? Life is short, bro. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get what I need to get done. I'm gonna keep grinding. I'm gonna do what I gotta do because at the end of it, you never know when time's gonna come, right? So it's all about your perception on different things. You got some negative things happening in your life, terrible things. Family's not there. Like you know, it's a lot of bad things that happen in your life. But at the end of the day, you gotta understand things are always gonna get better. No matter what, you'll always get better. Always gotta go through the day being positive and being a good person to other people. Because if you go to other people, I'll come back to you, I promise you. So, yeah. Okay. That's very, very, very good words, man. I love that and all that positivity. Okay. And um, what, what can people uh, be seeing next from you? Whether it be a music video or another show or what's next? Honestly, next for me, man, I think it's just more shows, bro. Like, shows? It's just like more shows, more spoken word stuff. And um, I might drop a music video next year. I think I am. I think I'm drop a music video next year. And uh, a lot more unspoken talents, bro, because, like, we're going to do a lot. We're going across, like, I'm telling you, going to universities, every colleges, but we're doing a lot, man. So mm -hmm. there's that. And, like, definitely just, like, just branching out and helping the community in different ways. You might just see me in your community. You never know. You might just see me in your community. Right, because I'm just trying to reach out and just try to branch out and help out different people and just, just go out on my way to just help the world, bro, because the world just needs people to just go out and help them. Because it all starts with you, bro. If you're to change, the world can change. You know what I mean? If you can change yourself, the world can change. So it's one of those you have to just be able to change yourself and be able to help other people so that change can actually help in the world. Right? People say, oh, I want change, I want change. But you're not being a change. Bro. Mm -hmm. right? Everybody wants a positive life. So everybody wants maybe to be positive. But you're just being negative towards people. Why do you have grudges towards people? Why do you hate your family so much? Why do you do that? Even if people do some negative things to you, you still got to love them no matter what. You got to love your enemies, bro. It's in the Bible, man. You got to love your enemies no matter what. At the end of it, it's going to hurt. It's going to suck. It's going to suck when people do you wrong and you have to say, I still love you no matter what. It sucks, it hurts, bro. But it's the, all, it's the pride inside of you. Like you, gotta, you gotta be selfless, bro. That's the greatest life. When you're selfless, man, I promise you, it's the greatest life you're gonna live. Because everything you, you go through, is just, it's all about love, right? And it's all about just helping other people, man. When you have your selfless self, bro, it's great, bro. You go around and help other people. No matter, you're not even sick, you're not even thinking twice. You're just like, hey, yo, what, what's, uh, how, how can I help this person? One person needs trans um, money to go on the bus, I got you, don't worry about it. Just because, just because, right? And dude, once you do the selfless acts, you realize life is so much better, bro. And you'll get it back instant. You know, it might be instant gratification, right. or just like come back, whatever. Like you never know when, bro. Like the other day, I was in, like, just, like I do little things all the time, bro. Mm -hmm. Like literally, I was like, what school? And this guy, randomly, I came to the, the computer lab and he was like, man, ah, oh, man, I need oh, my cards not working to print out favor. I was like, yo, I got you, boy. He's like, random guy, you know? He's mm -hmm. like, yo, I got you. Why are you so nice? I was like, because yo, it's about helping other people. Right? And he's like, dang, like, yo, I'll give you money for it. I was like, nah, I don't, I'm good, bro. Like, it was like 10 cents, I'm good. But he's like, nah, man, nah, nah, I'll give you, oh, I'll give you money. Like, nah, bro, I'm good. He's gonna give me a toonie. And I was like, I mean, it's 10 cents, bro. I'm, I'm okay. No, nah, take the toonie, bro. Get yourself a coffee or something. And I was like, I, I, I okay, okay, thank you. But like, I didn't even need it, you know? But at the end of it, it's because I wanted to help other people. So that's yeah. all it is, bro. Just, just strive to be that outlier in society. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. You gotta make the world a better place. Take a look at yourself and make the change. After Michael man. Jackson says. <laughs> okay, Timothy Spokes, awesome to speaking to you again. Thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for having and, um, me. Make sure you go look out uh, for any of the unspoken uh, talents shows coming coming up. If you want to be a part of it? They can message you on Instagram. Is that how they get in? Yeah, if you, if you want to be a part of it, man, just message me on Instagram. I like my personal account, which is the underscore life story. Mm -hmm. Or you can go on like the actual unspoken talents. Like it's just at unspoken talents and just message unspoken talents. And we'll get you in, man. And then you just come perform. So okay. yeah. Make sure you stream 99 and just yeah. look out. He's doing big things. It's positive things too. And it's like we need definitely more of that to just support it. So Timothy Spokes, thanks again. Thank you, man.